Miguel, great to talk to you. And I have to say, wow, it has been a long time, hasn't it? It has been, oh my God, almost nearly 20 years. Yeah, well, don't show our age, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you just wrote about what's been going on at the U.N. and the Arms Trade Treaty, and we know that they collapsed in July, the talks. But the U.N. has just been given the go-ahead to hold another round of talks in March to try to finalize the Global Arms Trade Treaty. President Obama signed on from the start onto the negotiations. He's now been reelected. So why do gun owners need to be concerned when it comes to what's in store for our firearm freedoms, for our right to self-defense? Well, uh, for one thing, Obama now, President Obama, does not have to concern himself with another re-election. He's now being re-elected. He can do whatever he wants to as long as Congress goes along with him. And in this election, the Democrats gained three more seats in the Senate, which means they got 56 senators with two independents that plan to vote with the Democrats. And in addition to that, there are at least five other GOP senators who have expressed the view that when it's when it is politically expedient to do so, they will vote with the Democrats. So that makes about 61 senators that could align uh, against the Second Amendment. And this is particularly troublesome. And it takes, a, for a treaty to pass, it takes a two-third vote, not a simple majority, two-thirds, mm -hmm. which means that... Uh, the Democrats have a little work to do, but it is still is a very slim margin. Five senators could decide to vote with the liberal bloc, with the gun control bloc, and uh, carry this treaty through the Senate. Mm -hmm. And if this happened, this would be a major catastrophe. Oh, no We're doubt about on. it. I mean, but you already have President Obama saying he, you know, thinks the Constitution gets in his way, and he's made clear about that. And, you know, I think it is a big concern because if he can't get done what he wants to do in the Congress, you know he's going to go straight to the U.N. because he's already said the U.N. needs to have more authority of what we do over here in the U.S. Oh, well, yes, he is willing to yield more and more sovereignty uh, of the United States of America to the United Nations. He, he's done it with all the things. He's going against the states on uh, immigration laws, and he would, uh, he is more than willing to do this with gun control. He's a very anti-gun president, and uh, I think he has enough uh, political capital that he has gained with this re-election to get it through mm -hmm. unless gun owners get together and oppose this. we got to get together and make sure the Senate understand that this is uh, a travesty if it passes. If this treaty passes and it's ratified by the Senate, we have a big problem. We can no longer uh, depend on the Supreme Court. And let me, I mean, let me go back here, what I mean by that. The Supreme Court in 2008, as you know, voted a Heller decision, right. uh, which was a good decision, but it was a by a four to five margin. And then in 2010, we passed the, it was the McDonald case versus Chicago, in which again, gun owners obtained a major victory. But again, it was by a very slim margin, four to five decision. And then now, uh, more recently, we had Obamacare, which was an incredible disappointment for conservatives. I wrote, in fact, an article uh, stating that this was a betrayal because uh, despite what Chief Justice Roberts said, uh, that it was constitutional because he, Obamacare really was a tax, he also, in his uh, opinion, he also stated that conservatives can no longer depend on the Supreme Court to overturn things that they do not like, that they have to go back to their legislators. If they don't want something to pass, they have to get with their senators and with their representatives and, uh, and stop whatever legislation they don't want in Congress because the Supreme Court is not going to be overturning uh, popularly elected uh, legislation. 
Now, this is really disturbing because the Supreme Court is supposed to be the third arm in our separation of powers and is supposed to decide what is constitutional and what is not. And yet this Obamacare was approved by a single vote by the chief justice of the Supreme Court. And if this happened with Obamacare, it could happen with the treaty power of the Constitution. And it's interesting, too, because you've got groups like Amnesty International and IANSA. They continue to insist that this has nothing to do with our Second Amendment, that they're not out to, you know, to take away our civilian ownership rights. But as former Ambassador John Bolton, and it goes back that long, made very clear, then put it in writing. And Wayne LaPierre was just at the U.N. saying, OK, if you don't put it in writing, then we have reason to be suspicious. And he said, you know, putting it in the preamble isn't the answer. you got to make sure that it's not in the scope of the treaty. And we have no indication at this point they're going to do that. Well, I believe that, the, you know, this, this treaty has been worked on uh, for several years. And what always comes out is that almost certainly if this small arms treaty passes, that almost certainly it will force national governments to enact uh, tougher licensing uh, right. requirements, uh, tougher gun control laws, uh, which le could legally uh, end up in the banning and confiscation of, of, of civilian firearms. And when you start saying, well, we're talking about illegal guns, well, uh, it, the definition becomes what is illegal for the United Nation of different countries in the United Nation and what we consider illegal. It becomes a very murky situation, which will end up with everything in the hands of civilian is going to be illegal. No. That's what it will end up. And they won't uh, define what small arms means, which is another concern, exactly, as you said. Exactly. Yep. Definition is the, the devil is always in the details. And... Uh, Therefore, the, you know, even at registry, well, I saw what happened in Cuba. You know, I grew up in a revolutionary family. My parents fought in the revolution to overthrow Fulgencio Batista. And we made a mistake because we ended up with an island in communism. But what I wanted to come back and say is that even though Fulgencio Batista was the dictator that he was, he allowed citizens to have firearms except they had to be licensed. Well, people were licensed. After the revolution, Fidel Castro took over, and he ordered the, mil quote, the militia, we, what a name, he sent them over to the registries in the various parts of the island, and they started confiscating those firearms from the, from the civilian registries. Mm -hmm. That happened in my own hometown. They came to my home. I was a little boy. And they tried to disarm my father. And that's it. I describe this in length in my, in my book, Cuban Revolution, Escape from a Lost Paradise. But my father refused. And my father said, hey, I was, I was the head of the underground here. I fought against Fulgencio Batista. How are you going to take my guns away? So, this, so they said, well, doctor, why do you want your guns for? The revolution is over. My father turned around, he was very smart, yeah. and he said, oh, to defend the revolution. So anyway, he was able to keep his 22 rifle and his 45 caliber pistol, but all the other arms they still took away, even though he was supposed to have been a revolutionary. So that is what happened. Everybody got disarmed in Cuba. Only the members of the Communist Party Members of the police and the armed forces were the only ones who could keep the firearms. So today, communism has come tumbling down all over the world, even in Russia. Cuba is still a communist state, a communist state where people have no freedom, no rights, because the civilian population, the law-abiding citizens, were disarmed and could not start another revolution. Well, so these are lessons that we need to learn. Absolutely. Always good to talk to you, Miguel. Glad to talk to you. And as I said, it's been a long time. But, you know, we'll be looking for your other stories on the U.N. And, again, it's all going to start coming down in March, so we all have to be concerned. As you said, gun owners, the NRA, and the NRA is committed to this, need to keep their forces strong and let them know this ain't going to happen. Absolutely, Jeannie.